Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and McDonald's employee exposes what they do. Now, at 605 pounds, I've been to a few McDonald's in my life. Like, I've even been behind the counter because I had friends that worked there when I was younger and stuff. I slipped around on that thing like I was freaking Elsa and Frozen, just ice skating on grease. It was disgusting. So I know McDonald's are gross. I also stole a bunch of cinnamon rolls, but statute of limitations, like I'm good here. So uh, McDonald's employees expose what they do. Let's get right into this one because it's going to be freaking gross. I know that. It's not hard to see the appeal of fast food. It's budget friendly, it's convenient, and if you're not expecting Michelin star quality, it can be pretty tasty. Oh wow, that is really good. But appetizing and safe are two different things. See- What are you guys doing if you see a maggot in your friggin- oh my god. I think I might still eat the damn thing. If I'm hungry enough, eh, yeah, nah, probably not. While parents might compulsively check their kids' candy after every Halloween for potential tampering, perhaps Mine this did. energy is better spent examining those meals served to customers in a paper bag. I couldn't Don't believe my, my eyes. Nuggies. I was like, I've never seen something this disgusting. Yeah, no. No, no, no. A hundred percent no for me. Like, seriously, McDonald's, what? People are suing your favorite fast food restaurants. Items are being recalled. Effective immediately, a stop and sell and discard. Employees are being forced to serve food gone wrong. But what about customer safety? Like, this stuff can get people really sick. Customers... What is that? That's... That don't look like nothing I've seen at... Was that McDonald's? Shit, why am I asking y'all? I should have known. ...have been hospitalized. Can I talk to somebody about the inspection? No, I can't. I can't, sweetie. I can't. But the severity of some situations are life-threatening. Several people became ill at the restaurant in Seekonk. And some ingredients have no business winding up on a customer's plate. Something's got to change. Like, this is going to get people sick. Like, really sick. Is eating fast food still worth the risk? I don't know. Y'all roll the dice and tell me, because I still think it tastes Read good. Read the headlines over it. the past few years, and you'll start to notice an alarming trend. Whether it's a customer experiencing cramps after a late night McDonald's run, patrons of restaurants coming down with mysterious illnesses. Wait, you can sue them for cramps? You ladies have a gold mine you didn't even friggin' know about. Counter note, I don't know how the hell y'all deal with that. I get one stomach cramp, I'm down for the count. Don't talk to me, don't even look at me. Like, I'm the biggest baby when I have a stomach cramp. You guys get them once a month, I don't know what I'd do with myself or rat poison somehow making its way into a Taco Bell burrito, grabbing a quick bite from a fast food chain has never seemed like such a hazardous mission. But with businesses now being hit with lawsuits left, right, and center, are these allegations simply following in the footsteps of money grab suits of the past that sought to cash in on the billion dollar industry? That scandal at Subway, you may have heard about this one. It turns out some- Jared? Oh, Jared was doing something else with his foot long. He was a kitty diddler. That had nothing to do with like, I know where they're going with this. Well, their famous footlong sandwiches have been coming in a bit short, and that, perhaps not surprisingly, has now led to a lawsuit. A New York woman says she spent $20 for a bucket of chicken last summer and was disappointed when the meal... Now, look, if somebody says they're pulling up with a footlong and they bring 11 inches, this is an 82% female audience. Y'all tell me what you're saying right here. Are you returning to sender or what's going on there? If a guy... It... If a guy lies about an inch, what are y'all doing there? All right, then we're talking about food, not that. Okay, keep going. Fell short of what was advertised. A new federal lawsuit alleging that mega coffee chain Starbucks is burning their customers when it comes to ice beverages. The suit alleging the brand serves up more ice than coffee. Or are these discounted dinners really Everywhere coming does. at the unadvertised cost of consumer health and safety? To answer this question, Let's take a look at what's really going down in some of the most frequented kitchens in the world. And what better place to start than the chain that's synonymous with fast food itself, McDonald's. Whether it's those glowing yellow arches, the colorful mascots, or child- Bro, I still think Grimace is the creepiest damn thing I've ever seen. And I had the McDonald's cassette when I was a kid. Like, I don't know, I don't remember the music, but I remember having like a Halloween themed cassette they had McDonald's songs on it. So I was a true fatty kid. Like, I had a damn cassette tape that had McDonald's songs on it. Who else had that shit? Nobody. I think I was the only one. I think it was like a 600-pounder exclusive or something. 
childhood memories of Play Place birthday parties, McDonald's has lastingly seared itself in American iconography. And just like the business itself, the restaurant's menu is its own legacy, full of household names from Happy Meals to Big Macs. And, of course, the timeless favorite, Chicken McNuggets. But what if we told you those golden, bite-sized snacks might not be as harmless as they look? In January 2023, Toronto news source blog TO reported that an Ontario woman was sick for days after ordering chicken nuggets from a McDonald's location in the city. Rebecca Boyd had originally intended to share with her three-year-old daughter. Luckily for the toddler, the nuggets were too hot for her to consume right away. Unfortunately for Rebecca, she wasn't put off by a little heat. Hunger overriding reason, Rebecca was already two and a half nuggets deep when she noticed what she was chewing on wasn't the normal texture of chicken, but raw and mushy. It turned out- Uh, that's friggin' disgusting, cause it's already like pink goop anyway. So, I don't- do you guys give your kids, like, lava nuggets and just, like, blow on it, or do you guys blow on it? I think my mom would just give me, like, lava and said, figure it out, son. You're not that dumb, but if it's, like, a little, little kid, you better blow on it or something, or wait to give it to them. I just saw that suit with that lady who sued because, like, the nugget dropped and was burning her kid for a couple minutes between his legs, and, or her legs, and, like, the car seat. That seems wild to me that you would give it to your kid in the first place that young. So The dish had allegedly been dangerously undercooked. And if the taste wasn't indicative of this, the nausea and flu-like symptoms Rebecca experienced in the following three days sure were. And according to tales passed around social media, Rebecca is far from the only person that's been served nuggets tartare. Raw. Raw. Now let's see them under flash. This was the one I bit into. This is one that I ripped open. That's a cooked one. That's clearly raw. One TikTok user even believed the chicken nuggets she was eating in Mexico must have used different ingredients. Tastes different, right? The nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> There's like, like, <laughs> like cheese in it. What in Sam hell? Where did you get pink Peruvian cheese? Because if I see pink cheese in a chicken nugget, like, something's going off in my brain. Like, that's just a Darwin Award right there. You weren't meant for this world if you think that's cheese. Or is it raw? I hope it's not raw. <laughs> Only to be hit with the realization that she hadn't been chowing down on the country's innovative twist on the classic, You're but special. what appeared to be raw meat. And it isn't just what's inside your McDonald's order that consumers should be worried about, but what's holding it together. It turned out numerous customers have allegedly found mold on the chain's buns. That's Just right. got it from McDonald's. Look at that. Is that normal? Yeah, so there's mold on my fish boy sandwich that I just bought. That's disgusting. And the ramifications of this oversight could be deadly. So this message is from McDonald's. Is your new standard serving your customers moldy food? My daughter is severely allergic to mold. Like, it can kill her. Had this been for her, I could be on my way to the hospital right now because of you guys because of your negligence okay but at least when mcdonald's and other chains slip up mold is pretty easy to spot right i think mold would be like the lower tier i'd rather eat that than the chicken tartare or whatever but yeah mold pick it off throw it out whatever i was raised country like i've done that one before right well this isn't always the case mold has the habit of hiding where customers are least likely to look from the bottom of domino's pizza crusts to inside a piece of KFC fried chicken. And yeah. sometimes it can go completely unseen, as customers and former McDonald's employees have alleged drink machines are rarely cleaned as thoroughly as they need to be. There is mold in most frappe machines because both stores I've worked at in Ohio, I never seen anybody clean a property. Nobody. In fact, an employee at a Louisiana McDonald's was so disturbed by the state of the drip tray for the restaurant's ice cream machine what the, that's what caused the friggin rona right there mcdonald's fourteen thousand of them figure it out i don't think it had anything to do with ba oh bats and chicken nuggets holy shit i just solved the friggin riddle damn man my brain is friggin awesome dude i'm something else decided to snap a few pictures i asked my manager i said when's the last time y'all cleaned this and she said, hurry up and bring it to the back before a customer sees it. And while the employee was allegedly fired for posting the images online, it seems threats of termination aren't enough to keep fast food workers quiet. This is what the inside of a broken McDonald's ice cream machine looks like. That's not ice. That's a chicken coop. 
Yup, that's a friggin' ice cream machine. Holy shit, I used to eat the hell out of them caramel things. Soft serve, caramel, whatever, Sunday. That, I would get that, well, sometimes. Yeah, I definitely got it. I was fat. I'm still fat. I would love to have one of those. I can't. I'm gonna diet. Now I'm fantasizing about ice cream. Damn it. The Not inside anymore, has guess. never been cleaned. See, unlike cooks at a five-star establishment whose restaurant's reputation and livelihood go hand in hand, it's hard to buy the allegiance of fast food workers through bi-weekly minimum wage paychecks at a business that views them as replaceable. Of course, this means when something shady happens behind the scenes, there's not a lot holding these employees back from making such information public, which is exactly what one Taco Bell worker from Green Bay, Wisconsin, decided to do when his boss allegedly crossed the line. Under the For minimum wage, though, I'm telling too. Like, I don't give a shit if I lose that job. Like, there's a bunch of other fast food places. I don't think, especially if you're young, man, you don't give a damn. You're just there for a paycheck, right? Username Keep It Real for Life, the employee used TikTok to claim the Taco Bell location he worked at tried to make him serve ingredients that shouldn't be added to any customer's five layer burrito, chalupa, or crunch wrap. Today is March 15th, right? Our area coach came in last night and told us we have to use beef that expired on February 27th of this year and March 10th of this year. And it wasn't well, just birthday. expired beef for Life's boss allegedly asked employees to ignore the expiration date on. We got onions that we have to use because they don't want to throw it out because of food costs. But the idea that profits should trump customer safety made the employee uncomfortable. I don't know if this is going at, on at other Taco Bells, but this one in particular, it is bad. For Life ex I mean, that's gross because you're selling it, but I've ate some expired stuff before. Them dates usually are like a little ahead. I, I, at least I've heard that before. I don't know. I really was like rolling the dice. It was food, man. I was 600 pounds. I was going to eat it, okay? Explain this practice wasn't just cheap. It was risky. Something's got to change. Like this is going to get people sick, like really sick. And according to Healthline, ground meat is more prone to spoilage meaning it goes bad faster. And while the spoilage usually only affects the odor and taste of the meat, it also makes it easier for the meat to develop pathogenic bacteria, a major culprit in food poisoning. Fever, cramps, and vomiting are just some of the symptoms customers could experience if their favorite Mexican-inspired meal was served. Get you the Dookie Burger, lose some damn weight, man. The best diet I was ever on was the one where I ate some old shrimp, man. I lost three pounds that day. ...with a side of expired beef. And there's always the possibility of more severe illness arising, especially in toddlers, children, and those with pre-existing health concerns. So workers at this Taco Bell allegedly took a stand. The TikTok user claimed managers and employees had left that specific location to work at other Taco Bell locations so their jobs wouldn't be taken away if they refused to serve the expired meat and produce. I don't know what you want to do, Taco Bell, but something's got to get figured out because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. The comment section of the TikTok was quickly taken over by viewers telling the employee to inform the health department of what was happening at the location. I would have just thrown it away if I was working there because why not, right? Like, Taco Bell will send you more and then if you're out of meat, like, you can go home. There's nothing to give people. I would have found a way to friggin' like reverse Uno the hell out of that and go home. As one user commented, it's against core and food safety violations in the health department. But it seemed for life was already aware of this, replying, Oh, I know, but when your job is at stake, most employees will do what they are told. We didn't sell it on our shift, but the closing crew will. Two days after the video was posted, for life allegedly received a call from his boss. She called me and said, I'm fired. I was like, that's fine, but what about what you said to cert what you told the employees to do to serve expired food and she ended up hanging up on me then he claimed hr called threatening legal action if he didn't follow her request she didn't want anything to do with anything but me taking down my video but the you gotta be careful about that one because i bet he was trying to get her recorded in certain states, the recording laws are all different. You can't just record someone, like, against their knowledge in most places. But if you tell them, it's all good. But yeah, she wasn't going to give you that on the phone. The video stayed up, a small act of defiance against a powerful business. Yet not every fast food failure is a business putting customer satisfaction 
below financial gain. Sometimes, chains just gravely miscalculate what their clientele actually wants. Take, for example, one of Starbucks' latest ventures in caffeinated beverages, the Oleato line. First launched in Milan before making its way to the U.S. in March 2023, this was coffee with a twist, the addition of Partana Extra Virgin Olive Oil. And while some were on board with the infusions of European flair and the chain's signature cafe lattes, blonde espressos, and cold brews... I might add this in. Maybe not every day, but... This is pretty good. To other customers, this was proof that even something as simple as coffee could be butchered. It's like... Bruh, I'm not a big coffee guy in the first place, but you start putting, like, olive oil in it, I would think that would do, like, crazy things to you. It would just go straight through you, because, right? That's why people drink, like, apple cider vinegar. They say it's good for their system or whatever. I imagine olive oil would do something to lubricate the friggin' pipes. The friggin' colon coffee is what they should have called it. An oil spill on your iced coffee. You can just see the ooey gooey olive oil, like, on the sides of the drink. When they say infused with olive oil, they actually just mean that there will be a layer of olive oil sitting on top of your drink. You don't like that drink. Admit it. Order that drink right now and drink that. I I like the drink. I think it's I think it's I think it's a, it's a drink. I like. What in the world? Oh. Yeah. No. 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 A hundred percent no for me. But it wasn't just the taste that had customers concerned about the novel concept, but the effects that had more than a few people running <laughs> to the bathroom. It. Olive oil's been used as a natural laxative for, like, centuries. Are people just... Right? Get you the BP oil slick brew. Like, it's the new thing. The new fad. People are stupid, man. They'll buy anything if you just, like, advertise it right. Realizing this? And also, coffee already makes you poop. So Starbucks is selling you poop potion, and people are angry that it's making them poop. If you don't want to poop, don't buy the poop potion. Yet others pointed out that the line's laxative effects could be spun in the company's favor. New marketing right. campaign... Starbucks new weight loss coffees. Well, I know what to drink before my next colonoscopy, but this isn't the only item on Starbucks' menu that left customers with stomach troubles. Ever heard of the chain's chicken, maple butter, and egg sandwich? Well, it wouldn't be surprising if it slipped under your radar. After all, I'm gonna call you dumb if you're ordering chicken at Starbucks anyway. They're damn, they're baristas. They're not frying no damn chicken. They're brewing your coffee, so that's where you effed up, buddy. Last summer, the sandwich was only added to the menu for less than a week before it disappeared from the chain. As it turned out, hundreds of customers, as well as baristas, had allegedly experienced abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea after consuming the sandwich. Some even claimed to find bones, tendons, and raw meat, as one user took to Twitter with a disturbing image of the pink inside of her sandwich, writing, What the hell, Starbucks? I'm pregnant trying to enjoy my chicken sandwich and it's raw! Others appeared to comment on the dark but possible outcomes of consuming the sandwich. POV, I'm taking you to an MRI of what's left of your intestines after you had the Starbucks maple chicken sandwich. I think you would have been like better off with the colon cleanse coffee than the friggin' pink madness. Like, what that lady call it? Cheese inside her chicken nugget? That lady was smoking some good stuff, buddy. Me FaceTiming my manager after someone unalive from choking on a bone in the new maple chicken sandwich. With the increasing what? number of horror stories involving the sandwich circulating online, the Seattle-based coffee house had to act quickly. According to a message an alleged Starbucks employee posted to TikTok, six days after the sandwich was launched, corporate sent out a memo for stores to stop selling and discard the sandwich immediately. A statement from the company claimed the sandwich did not meet Starbucks' quality standards and a recall was issued, although they said it wasn't related to listeria or salmonella. And this wasn't the only... Let's be real. They sold two of those things, and one of them was to the guy they showed. So that's why they had to get rid of them. They probably expired. Nobody's going to Starbucks. Like, that's the basic, like, girl starter pack. Go to Starbucks, whatever. Get you a cake pop. Yeah, take a picture with it for Instagram. Like, that's what you're all doing. Come, let's be real here. Only recall from the chain. In September 2022, cans of Starbucks's vanilla espresso triple shot were also taken off of shelves. And this time, it wasn't because of any ingredient gone bad. No, the problem was that the drinks were contaminated with shards of metal. This means any unwitting consumer gulping down their daily caffeine fix could have ended up with dental issues, choking, or lacerations in the gastrointestinal system. There's a lesson yeah. here. Carefully examine your food before you eat it. As our next story will prove, there's no telling what could be hiding inside. Subway, eat fresh. 
At least... Look, I'm not fingering any footlongs trying to find like a metal tab in it or something like that. If you guys can't keep metal out of my meat, that's a real friggin' issue right there. I mean, I've already got enough titanium in my stomach, though. I had weight loss surgery. There's some staples in there. So I could do with a little extra metal, probably. It wouldn't mess with me too much. It's already in there. That's what the tagline claims. But with the Irish Supreme Court ruling that the chain's bread has too high a sugar content to be legally classified as such, and a 2021 lawsuit filed against the business that alleged what the chain uses as tuna doesn't contain tuna or fish at all, customers might be inclined to believe the opposite, especially considering what happened at one of Subway's establishments in 2015. See, while the film Ratatouille might make a rat in a restaurant look like a charming experience, it seems the magic of Disney doesn't translate to real life. At least, not when the rodent is in the center of your sandwich. This is exactly the predicament J. Armstead I could have told you that shit was going to happen right there. You're next to Portland. That's a portal to hell. I've seen all the stuff about Portland. I wouldn't go there on my worst day. Like Portland, I've seen crackhead drone hunting, and I'm pretty sure that takes place in Portland. Check that out on YouTube. It's the funniest shit ever. They just fly drones and crackheads just throw stuff at the drones. It's hilarious. I found himself in when he visited a subway in Lincoln City, Oregon with his friend Matt Jones. The server had just finished preparing his friend's teriyaki chicken sandwich with a scoop of spinach when she started on Jay's Italian sub. However, this time, when the server dished the spinach onto the sandwich, there was a little extra surprise nestled among the greens. A horrifying moment friend Matt Jones recalled for USA Today. The lady behind the counter said it's a dead mouse, and I, and I laughed. I said, there's no way, no friggin' way. And now faced with a situation you'd have to see to believe, the friend took a photo as evidence of what happened. Look, you guys have a marketing issue here. I would have said, the new Little Stewart movie is coming out. This is how we're advertising. Like, and I would have just made, it goes viral, right? That's marketing. Not all press is, well, bad press is still press, but yeah, no, that shit ain't going no good way. Like, you can't spin that. Yeah, I laughed the most. Jay was in complete utter shock, and the lady behind the counter didn't even know what to say or do. In the end, the server offered them a refund and to make new sandwiches. Matt's response? No, I'm good. I'll probably never eat here again. Subway disposed of the products in the sandwich unit after this finding, and the health department gave them a clean bill of health. However, anyone who ordered spinach from that location earlier that month could have consumed food tainted by a dead rodent. And unfortunately, mice aren't the only critters that can ruin a perfectly good meal. In 2022, health inspections at a Dunkin' Donuts in Miami found six violations, including moldy ice machines and employee failing to wash their hands before handling. Bro, those ice machines are always the grossest because nobody wants to clean them because it's hard to do. But also not washing your hands. Who's eating a dookie donut? Ew. Because those gloves, they tell, ew. That's gross as hell. Y'all probably eat a lot of Dunkin' too. I'm on a diet. I ain't done it in a while. ...food and what else? Oh yeah. Flies finding a home on the chain's namesake. Can I talk to somebody about the inspection? No, I can't. I can't, sweetie. I can't. No. Flies landing on the donuts? No, no, no. And while the occasional bug in a restaurant might be inevitable, the establishment had already received warnings about their insect problem earlier that year. Think about what flies land on when you take your dog out and what they land on when you pass a dumpster. What they could have landed on before they landed on the donuts. Dookie Donuts, I'm telling you, don't eat the brown one up top. There's a little something extra in that one. The double fudge packer right there. Here. And perhaps more importantly, Told ya. think of what double flies chocolate. might do after they land. See, when South Wales NHS worker Alex Craven was biting into the last piece of chicken in his KFC Mighty Bucket, he noticed something peculiar in the deep fried meat. White grains. And when the 22-year-old inspected the grains closer, he came to a nausea-inducing realization. Those weren't grains in his chicken, but eggs. To be specific, Alex believed they were fly eggs. And if you think this is an isolated incident, think again. There have been several other cases exactly like this, one involving a woman from Auckland, New Zealand, who only noticed the egg after she was four pieces into an eight-pack of wings. I was sick to my stomach, and then I was worrying because I'm breastfeeding my baby. Why are you all pregnant? What, what is going on here? What's in that damn chicken? Everybody's pregnant. I know how I know how it happened, but how'd you... At McDonald's? I know how it happens at Arby's. That's the extra horsey sauce. But I don't know what's going on there with everybody being pregnant and eating tainted food. 
baby too, Taryn Cumming told news source Stuff. And while becoming sick from these eggs is unlikely, it's not impossible. According Ew. to Medical News Today, fly larvae can ingest the bacteria that flies pick up throughout the day, possibly transmitting salmonella or E. coli to those who unintentionally ingest the eggs. And then there's that nasty truth of what fly eggs hatch into, maggots. And those are exactly what an Australian man claimed he found in his piece of KFC chicken. I mean, they're just trying to give you extra protein. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Little maggots, they're good for you. I have watched Survivor Man. I've seen Bear Grylls. They eat that shit. It, it can't hurt you, right? On Facebook, Martin Bates wrote, If this doesn't put you off KFC, nothing will. This came with extra wiggly things. I just taken a bite and it tasted funny. I can eat most things, but when they wiggle in your mouth, that's not so good. Adding barbecue sauce, not going to fix it. But bugs aren't the only Speak potential danger KFC customers should be aware of. In 2022, a woman in Newport, Wales was eating the establishment's Zinger Burger when she noticed something was off. As I got to the thicker bit and bit into it, I That's felt my teeth said. go right through the chicken. <laughs> kind of like the way it feels when the knife goes through raw chicken when you're cutting it, Michelle Corton told Wales Online. She immediately recoiled from the slimy sensation. The meat was raw, a fact even workers couldn't deny when she showed them the burger. There were a Oh, bro, that's the last thing I ever had from KFC, I think. Because someone was like, I want some KFC. I couldn't eat very much. It was like 300 calories or something like that. I was like, I'll just get a zinger. It'll be okay. It's not the healthiest, but it's not going to destroy my diet for the day. And now they're just telling me that I just ate like some toxic shit there too. There were a couple of people in the queue while I was at the counter. And they actually canceled their orders when they heard what had happened, Michelle said. Again, she was far from the first person this had happened to. Various other customers have alleged experiencing the same thing. That with was some shrimp. even claiming to receive chicken with vital fluids still on it. And that's not all that's made customers leaving KFC locations never want Man. to come back. One customer was enjoying a chicken burger from one of the chain's establishments in Suffolk, England, when she bit into something hard. Thinking it was a bone, I pulled it from my mouth, Lucia Richardson told Metro. When it had finally come out and I looked at it, I was nearly physically sick. Lucia had pulled a chunk of metal out of her burger. And no, this wasn't the chain's twisted version of- Okay, so now you sit there and say, congratulations, you won our needle in a haystack contest. Like, <laughs> contest, contest. Why do I say it like that? But you gotta spin things the right way. Reverse Uno everything. A surprise bag. An investigation by the company concluded that the metal likely came from a plastic brush KFC used to bread the chicken. And while KFC claimed there were robust procedures and checks in place to prevent this from happening, those evidently failed in this case. And this wasn't the only goodie a customer unknowingly left a KFC location with. While chicken feet are a popular snack amongst different cultures when prepared and cooked properly, it's not something a Liverpool woman wanted to find in her Wicked Zinger meal from the restaurant. I love KFC, but I don't think I'll ever eat it again. I've worked around food and I know about health and safety. They need to up their standards, Stacey Kenny told local publication Liverpool Echo. However, a KFC sp Another freaking Zinger and it's the last thing I had. That doesn't even look, that don't look. What is that? What the hell? Looks like a friggin' vampire fang. Spokesperson believed the patron was mistaken and claimed what Stacy believed was a chicken's foot was actually breading from the burger bun. But the debate over whether this was a chicken's foot or bread masquerading as one doesn't erase the chain's track record. From a location in Washington that continued serving the public, despite the outside area allegedly being overrun with rats, both deceased and alive, to creep them little shits just ran straight up from Portland to Washington. So yeah, you gotta just shut down the West Coast in general. Maybe Crawley's found in drinks and food, the chain's plummeting reputation isn't the result of one allegation, but many. Yet the food isn't always to blame when it comes to fast food scandals. With that in mind, if you have a tingling sensation in your throat when eating out, it could be in your best interest to leave the restaurant, and fast. At least, that's a symptom some of the 18 customers at Panera Bread in Massachusetts experienced, along with skin irritation. Oh, go back to the West Coast. Don't ruin Panera for me. I used to love those cinnamon bagels. I haven't had them in a long ass time, probably like 15 years, but I used to love them. And difficulty breathing before they fell ill. But what required five of these patrons to be rushed to the local hospital? Well, it turned out it was an issue with the air quality, not the bread bowls. Either a gas leak from the air conditioning system or carbon monoxide poisoning were the likely culprits, neither of which would be a first for the chain. And sometimes, 
Health hazards are simply what companies fail to disclose. Take, for example, Chick-fil-A's grilled fillets and chicken nuggets. Well, unbeknownst to consumers, these meals contained an undeclared dairy allergen, one of the most common allergies in infants and children, with symptoms that... Oh my god, Chick-fil-A, you guys don't need any more bad press at all. But now you're trying to murder little kids? What the hell's going on at Chick-fil-A? Somebody's gotta get fired there. Their CEO's gotta go, buddy. ...range from mild to life-threatening. And while the chain worked to remove the allergen by fall 2022... Starting October 28th, it will be safe for you again. Even when the ingredients at a fast food chain are perfectly up to snuff, customers can still get sick. See, when you order from a restaurant, you're not only putting your trust in the establishment to follow health precautions, but also in the person in charge of preparing your meal. And what happens when an employee betrays this trust? Well, bro, fast food workers do the nastiest stuff. I'm telling you, like I've seen her heard stories and seen people do like disgusting things at fast food places. I've seen the movie Waiting. I know that they're rubbing it on their pubes and stuff. That probably actually friggin' happens. Well, the story of Jenna Vogt is definitely a worst case scenario. In July 2022, Jenna ordered a double cheeseburger combo from a Wendy's in St. Rose, Louisiana, a meal that allegedly led to unforeseen health complications, including severe sepsis, E. coli, septic shock, cerebral hemorrhage, and acute GI bleeding. The customer claimed the burger was contaminated with a preformed toxin. As for the cause of the contamination, that would allegedly be poor hand-washing procedures, along with improper inspection. Oh my god, everybody's eating the Dookie Doubles. What is, like, the food poisoning levels at fast food is insane. Because the most I ever got food poisoning was from, like, Golden Corral. I don't think it was from, like, fast food. I don't even know if I've ever... Oh, I take that back. I got pretty sick one time from McDonald's. I didn't want to touch it again for a long time. Action ...and washing of the product. This alleged oversight led Jenna to spend about two months in the hospital, which put a strain on her marriage, mental health, and bank account, leading Jenna and her husband to sue the chain for $75,000 in damages in 2023. But while this alleged fast food fumble ended in a lawsuit, most don't. Typically, disgruntled customers are simply offered refunds, vouchers, or apologies and sent on their way. And sure, could you imagine if you just got a double and it led to a divorce? They're like strain on your marriage. Buddy was trying to hit the eject button if a burger takes him out of the marriage. For real, like... Sure, these tactics can smooth over situations, but they fail to address the problem that's been leaving customers with a bad taste in their mouths that can't so easily be washed out. After hearing these stories, the choice to give up fast food might sound easy, but for those that depend on these low-cost meals, calling it quits isn't so simple. This means it's all the more important that everyone continues to shed light on the mistakes chains are making. Just got it from McDonald's. Look at that. Is that normal? Flavor. As, at the very least, the public deserves to be informed on what they're putting into their bodies. This stuff can get people really sick. This is a story of fast food sickness and all the ways convenience can come with more drawbacks than customers. Oh my god, but I think everybody knew that fast food was friggin' gross, so I guess moral to the story, stay the hell away from fast food if you're pregnant. They, everybody that's pregnant seems to be the ones having the issues. So you stay the hell away, do not get you any double nothings, because that's apparently what is like the demon. The dookie demon comes from the double, like it's just crazy, man. But alright, that's it. I'm done. I don't eat fast food anymore anyways. Very rarely do I even touch it, but this is disgusting. Like, I knew it was gross, but this just made it that much worse. So, alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye!